What's going on guys? Chatty C R C back with you. And here we go. This is the Joshua Bardwell F4 All-in-One Flight Controller. It's going to be a first look video. Some things I'm really excited about. Josh has obviously done a great review and tutorial video on his flight controller already. But I just wanted to give some of my impressions and let you guys know what this is going to be going into. And also, I want to do a little side-by-side -side comparison to a common board between the two, the CL Racing F4S. So let's get started. This board is going to be the heart and soul of my Impulse RC Reverb when it gets here. So if you guys are excited about the board, the build of the reverb and everything like that. There's going to be plenty of that here on the channel. Hit that subscribe button and all that kind of good stuff and stick around because we'll be doing some turning that thing into a mid-range ripper. It's going to be awesome. So this is the CL Racing F4S board, which has been out for a few months now. It is built by Changlin Racing, and I think he's affiliated with Armat and Quads and everything like that. Since then, I've been flying this board on all of my builds. I use good ESCs with capacitors, and I have no problems with it at all. Some things I like about the board are just the overall layout. It's really easy to work with. It's easy to work with uh, TBS Crossfire because I can put all four pins right here for my crossfire for power ground and transmit and receive you get your VTX stuff here all your camera stuff up here and then you've got ESC pads not necessarily in the corners but kind of in the corners of the board it does have this big all-in-one connector right here which is not on the barbware well board if we flip it over we have Voltage selecting here on the back and the SD card reader, of course our battery in and out and right here we have two more uh, transmit UARTs. And upon its release, a lot of people were experiencing issues. Uh, we later found out that it was due to filtering in the board and dirty ESCs, basically just not a good setup. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. As you can see, the things that Joshua has explained in his video are things that I really, really like. So let's take a look at the two boards here real quick. We can see they compare pretty much. We got the nice big solder pads, all that kind of stuff. Got the gummies, all kinds of UARTs and camera control power everywhere he's already went over in his video how we've got 7.6 volts back here and also in the front um, he's added grounds for all the ESCs so we don't have to tack those on top here of our grounding pads if you're using ESC ground wires which I am now again just because they're there and you might as well use them he did say you know it was going to be a little bit weird for a crossfire hookup um, TX4 is right here and RX4 is right here, so we'll be able to use those two. And then hopefully this buzzer pad pulls uh, 5 volts. We'll check that out and see if we can power right there. So we can have all of our crossfire wires all bundled up right there, nice with each other. Now this is going to be great for the reverb because everything I'm going to be using individual ESCs on it. So I'll be able to wire everything up real nice. There's not going to be any standoffs in the way that I'm going to have to route wires around. And the wires can be all at the same length. You're not going to have to make one longer or shorter like on these boards over here to try and cross them and everything else if you're using individual ESCs to make everything fit together. And that's really key, especially running long range and mid range to keep down vibrations is we don't want wires, you know, tugging on the board and making unnecessary movements. Because if you do that, then you're just taking away the fact that this is gummies and all that kind of stuff, which speaking of the gummies, these are a little bit firmer than the yellow ones. I've had these, uh, one of them actually kind of rip on me a little bit. 
on one of my other boards. So I'm hoping these are a little bit better quality. They feel a little bit stiffer. So I think we should be all good there. So one of the best things about the board that you really got to talk about is that A, it's 35 bucks. So that price is just great and it just makes it a perfect option for a lot of people looking for something that's good quality at an affordable price. It doesn't come with any kind of mounting hardware or none of the frills or anything like that because pretty much everybody has that stuff just laying around anyway. So why pack it in there and have to increase the price of it by a few bucks? It just comes, as you saw, in this plastic bag here. So nothing super special about that at all. And as I said before, you got all your camera controls and all that kind of stuff right up here. You've uh, got uh, camera input and the power right below it down here. You've got all the inputs for you Tyrannus and Spectrum type of people. If we flip the board over, Right here is where you are going to select between 5 volts and 3.3 volts. We've also got another 5 volt source here. Um, on the back, the one difference I did notice is that the VBAT connectors are switched. So make sure you are conscious of that. This is negative over here now where this is positive on this board. So definitely be careful with all that chip design and everything pretty much looks the same here nothing standing out any different or anything at all really there's no uarts or nothing here on the bottom everything is on the top now they do have a manual for this available online if you need to i've yet to hook it up to the computer i hear it comes flashed with betaflight 3.2.1 which is fine uh, so that I'm not worried about that. I'm really looking forward to see what kind of FPV video that I get out of it. One of my CL Racing F4S's look really great. The other one, I get some faint diagonal lines um, in it uh, that are constant. They don't change with speed or anything like that. So it doesn't have to do with uh, the ESCs or anything. It's just something that's going on um, inside of here. So again, everything's laid out like just perfect for me. Uh, I'm, he's done a couple things that I'm glad that he says he always complained about. Like everything is silk screened here on top. So you know where your soldering thing is at. The pads are nice and spread out. They're not as close together. Like, you know, right here, things get kind of messy because you have your big honking ESC wires that you have to kind of solder in versus your little wires which may or may not be silicone so things can get kind of messy here this is nice to have everything just kind of spread out and everything just kind of has a place so that's really it guys stick around with the channel we'll see how this thing performs and we'll talk to you later